What's going on guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This one's going to be talking about The Walking Dead Season 3. It's going to be a discussion topic. We're going to talk about pacing in this video. So, a few people have been discussing in the comments, talking about uh, The Walking Dead videos. Um, what do you think about the pacing of Season 3? You know, and they had it down to a formula up to this point. Basically, the first season of the television series it equaled six episodes of the comic book. So they took basically the first trade paperback, okay, and uh, so first six issues, and that was season one. It only covered that much. Six episodes, six issues. They added in a lot of stuff. A few of the episodes, actually half of them, were from the comic books, and the other half actually were mostly filled with new material that we hadn't seen in the comic books at all. So it actually didn't even fill up. Uh, it didn't actually include all the events because Shane lived until the next season. So in terms of pacing, the first season with the filler and everything ended up being only one trade paperback. The second season also followed that whole uh, formula where you had six issues of the comic book, one season of the TV uh, TV show. Even though it was 13 episodes, it still was drawn out so much and stretched that they did not leave the farm until the very end of the season, which uh, in the trade paperback is also, again, basically equal to trade paperback number two or episode or issues, um, I think, seven through 12 or 13. Uh, you have to count them. But in other words, six issues, one season again. Now, the third season has completely gone away from that whole... Uh, formula and I think it feels completely different at least so far it does from what we've seen now we've only seen four episodes so far out of the 13 that we're gonna see or sorry uh, 16 is it 16 Am I? yeah 16 episodes from um, season three uh, four episodes so far so we're only a quarter of the way through at this point um, but even still it has already passed about maybe 15 20 issues of the comic book series already in just four uh, episodes. It's passed through multiple graphic novels. For example, the very first episode with the prison inmates um, was basically this whole trade paperback, six issues. This was all basically done in the first episode of the season, where at the end of the season, uh, or at the end of the, uh, the episode, uh, Rick kills uh, Thomas, which is, is different in this, but in terms of story and in terms of where you're at, um, the, the very first episode shattered uh, shattered six issues of the uh, the comic book series, and then the next couple have gone way past that to the point where it wasn't in the comic book series until issue about forty to fifty, somewhere between there, like forty five or so, when when Lori actually does in fact uh, die, um, and in the TV series, obviously we have uh, we've seen that now. We've already We've already seen that, which is kind of crazy to think that they went that way. Now, they kind of did the same thing with Dale, where they made it happen at a different time. But, um, you know, it's really weird that they decided to sort of uh, completely change that whole way of doing the show, because it feels like almost like a different show, in that before you had, like in season two, for example, there was at least four or five, well, three, four episodes there in the middle of season two, starting from Bloodletting, which was episode two, uh, episode four wasn't that fast, five wasn't that fast, six. There was a few and then maybe one afterwards. I'd say at least four to five episodes of that season that really were really slow and not much happened. You know, there'd be maybe like, like I remember in Bloodletting, there was, I think, one zombie, one walker in the whole episode. And that was the uh, the well zombie, the fat one, uh, which just that whole thing felt stupid. Them pulling the, the walker out of there, out of the well, especially now. Now they're not even at the farm anymore. It just feels really stupid. But um, we haven't had anything like that in season three at all. Nothing at all like that. I mean, we start off and you get a huge season premiere with them, you know, bum rushing the prison and taking it over. And then after that, the next episode, you get a huge, exciting episode of, of action with the with the inmates and with everything that happens with them. And, uh, you know, we meet them and literally they all, you know, die or that's resolved. The problems with them is basically resolved in the, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say that because Andrew tends to survive and then comes back to cause mayhem later on. So I guess I shouldn't say that. But uh, Thomas, at least, uh, the leader of the group, that whole thing, which also ties to the comic books, is resolved right then and there. 
And then we meet the governor, and he gets his whole entire own episode, which to me did not feel like filler. You know, it didn't. Uh, some people didn't like that episode. They thought it sucked. I thought it was great. I thought it was an awesome episode. It didn't have Rick in it. It didn't have that group at all in it. But at the same time, we got to know Philip. We got to know the governor. And uh, Merle, ob obviously, is back. That's a huge thing right there as well. And... Um, you know, it was just, I thought it was a great story builder to get to know this other group because we're going to be spending time with both groups now because obviously Rick's group is starting to wind down. Like, they don't have that many members. They got two new ones, but now they've lost two of the characters that we really, you know, have, uh, that are really important and close to them. So the new, the new two inmates, Axel and Oscar, I mean, how much story are you going to get out of them? They're not going to be able to communicate that much. So in order to, to uh, you know, make the season go all the way through to 16 episode, I expect them to be switching back and forth quite a bit. But the pacing that they've been at so far in season three, it, it just, I, I see it as like it can't keep up. Like I don't see how they could possibly keep up this kind of pace with all this action, tons of zombies. Like every episode, there's like walkers like crazy, um, with the exception of the, uh, the governor episode. But the others has been nuts, especially compared to having one or two walkers in an entire episode from season two. Um, I do like the new pacing with the new style and having lots of walkers and lots more action and that kind of stuff. But I do feel like it probably should slow down a little bit because we haven't gotten much uh, much development out of the characters that are part of Rick's group. We haven't spent too much time with them outside of zombie chaos to really see how they're doing. But um, maybe that's just because in season two, a lot of people were complaining because there was too much, uh, you know, uh, talking and too much slow moments like that and so that they decided let's let's get rid of some of those and let's put way more action in way more walkers in and do that this way instead so i mean i guess i do like the pacing but i think definitely it, it's got to slow down at some point they can't do a whole season like this and have every episode be like that crazy that exciting have that much stuff happening characters dying all the time because they're going to run out of characters uh, a lot of people, there are rumors right now that uh, maybe Tyrese, who's a character from the comic books, will uh, come in um, midway through the season. So if that rumor is true, I think that would be great because then he could add some more characters to Rick's group. Because right now it's getting it's getting pretty thin. I mean, Herschel is useless now because of his leg. He can't really do anything. You know, um, Axel and Oscar don't seem to be very useful in terms of like doing things. And you know, Daryl goes off by himself because well, who's going to go with him? You know, T-Dog's gone, so, I mean, Glenn should probably stay there because Rick's losing his damn mind. So, you know, the group's really wearing thin. So who's going to fight against the governor with part of Rick's group at this kind of a pace if they keep dying off? Uh, especially if Carol's dead, too. It's like, God, there's no group left, you know, or it's getting close to that. So I definitely enjoy the pace, and I think it's great. Lots of action is really good. And I actually can't believe they're able to do it, like they're able to put that much stuff in already like we're able to see that much stuff i feel like the amount of material they've already squeezed into four episodes it probably could have been stretched to six or seven or eight episodes really if you think about it uh because i kind of feel like in season two about the same amount happened from the beginning of the season to um uh, pretty much dead already which is episode seven which was the mid-season finale when shane rips open the barn as has happened in this season too so uh, definitely it's got to slow down at some point. They can't keep it up, I don't think. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about it. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer the Season 3 pace with characters dying off more quickly and uh, lots, of, lots of walkers, lots of action, lots of craziness? Or do you kind of think that, you know, it'll be nice to see it slow down a little bit? Um, you know, sort of the way it was in Season 2, because that was kind of nice to have that a little bit. Relaxing episodes, get some good character development, and then amp up back to the action. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys, on the pacing. It's been nuts. That's all I really got to say. See you tomorrow, guys. Strap, same piece.